Right now, something of major historic importance is happening right across Europe. In some places, there has been a rise in far left-wing political parties, and at the moment, there is a huge rise going on in nationalistic parties, some of whom are really quite scary. You may be aware of the coalition of the radical left, or Syriza, that was elected in Greece. This was largely in response to the crippling of the Greek economy. The financial crisis started outside Europe, and Greece's overspending and lack of tax collection left it very exposed, but it was being shackled into the euro that kept it in desolation. Being in the euro has meant that Greece has been unable to devalue its currency and trade its way out of recession, much like Iceland did. Eight years on, unemployment is running at over 25%. It is this desperation that led the Greeks to vote in radical politicians who have only made the matters worse. However, you may currently be less aware of the huge rise in nationalistic parties, some of which are moderate, others are really quite radical. In France, some polls are Marine Le Pen, head of the French National Front, tied with the current president ahead of next year's general election. In Germany, the alternative for Germany party has seen its performance treble in the polls. Germany too is having a general election next year. In Austria, the nationalistic anti-Islam presidential candidate won the first round of voting and came within half a percent of becoming president. In the Netherlands, an anti-Islam anti-immigration party is now top of the polls ahead of next year's general election. In Sweden, a nationalistic party is starting to contest the two larger parties. In Finland, a nationalistic party is now part of a coalition government, and in Hungary, a nationalistic party is now in government, and the closest opposition are now nationalistic as well, and more extreme. One of the main reasons for this happening, and is happening over a very short period of time, is because of dreadful immigration policy, and the EU is making it worse. In 2015, there was around 1.5 million asylum claims from people wanting to move into Europe, although actual figures could be different. It is estimated that around a million people moved to Germany in 2015. The asylum claims were predominantly from Syria, Afghanistan and Iraq, but there's also been large-scale migration from right across North Africa. Migration can be a really good thing. There are lots of studies saying it's been good for economies, but that heavily depends on the type of migration you get. Germany has a minimum wage of €1,473 a month. That's around £14,000 a year. Few employers are going to pay that much for someone who can't speak the language. This means that a huge proportion of them are going to go straight onto state welfare. The data isn't great, but here are some demographic data from the United Nations Refugee Agency. As you can see, there's over twice as many men coming than women. Here's some data from Sweden. You can see this is predominantly male. A further issue is one of crime. Now this one is very difficult to talk about without instantly being called a racist. This is not about race. I am not a racist. I could not care less about the colour of people's skin. But imagine you are a young Libyan. For most of your life, Gaddafi would have been in charge of your country, a mad or authoritarian dictator who had undertook horrendous acts of violence against the Libyan people. Eventually there's an uprising, huge amounts of death on each side, and eventually you see the rebels, who you're probably siding with, drag an old man out of a hole in the ground and beat him to death in the street and parade his body. Perhaps not the best role models. You then enter three years of civil war, more death and destruction, and then in the last two years Daesh show up, start beheading people and trying to impose radical Islam. What I'm saying is, there are a huge number of people that have been exposed to horrors we can barely even imagine. When people have this kind of upbringing, they are far more likely to have emotional issues and behavioural problems than someone who was raised in Henley-on-Thames. Here is footage of a Syrian child who has managed to get to Istanbul, so to safety, seeing an aeroplane. <coughs> These pictures are drawn by refugee children from Syria. Similar trauma can be observed in many cases right across much of North Africa and the Middle East. These are some of the most war-torn countries with the most extreme terrorists and brutal dictators in the world. This does not mean that all people from these countries will have issues, but a lot will. However, what do you think is going to happen to the crime rate when you have a large influx of mostly men into a country in which most of them can't speak the language, they can't work, and a large proportion of them come from an extremely traumatic background. On New Year's Eve, there were hundreds of attacks in Cologne and other cities right across Germany. There were over 500 sexual assaults reported in Cologne alone. 149 of the 153 identified suspects were non-German, mostly from Morocco and Algeria. While these attacks have been the most widespread, there has been a massive and sustained increase in crime statistics right across Germany. Now, as I said, it's horror that begets horror, but I completely recognise that it is very hard for a German, or for anyone for that matter, to stay compassionate if someone you know has been raped and beaten by a group of 20 men that you are paying for while they are in your country. 
What we need is a rational debate on what to do, rather than having people jump to either extremes of the argument. An all migrants evil we need to get rid of migrants argument will lead to ruin. Were Germany trying to deport a million people who do not want to be deported, that would result in massive bloodshed. Equally, an argument of you are racist, we should have more migrants, is just as bad. This stops what could be a legitimate concern from being exposed about the safety of someone's friends and family. If these concerns are not allowed to be discussed, and safety levels continue to deteriorate, then you're going to see an explosive reaction from those, many of whom have started off being perfectly reasonable. In this situation, taking another million migrants would also lead to massive bloodshed. We wouldn't help anyone, not even the migrants. They didn't risk the journey to enter into another civil war. Currently, this is the direction that Europe is going in. When people ask legitimate questions, they are subjected to criticism, rather than having their concerns taken seriously, so they are becoming more extreme. So what needs to happen? We need a calm, level-headed, open debate with some sensible policies to defuse the situation. Enter Jean-Claude Juncker, President of the European Commission, the President that nobody voted for. Juncker's first proposal was to force EU countries into taking more migrants, and if they do not do so, they will be fined €250,000 per refugee. That's not just fanning the flames, that's driving an oil tanker into them. What Europe should be doing now is reintroducing borders, focusing on accommodating the migrants already here, deporting criminals as appropriate, and having a temporary cessation on further migration while things cool down. Unfortunately, the EU is somewhat ideologically opposed to European countries having borders. If they had their own borders, they might start thinking that they were real countries again, and that they can set their own laws rather than having a fleet of overpaid, unelected commissioners do it for them. So instead of helping Greece, the country the EU has ruined, reinforce its borders, the EU went, Hey Turkey, you're still a real country, can you please please help reduce the number of migrants coming into Europe? We're really really desperate and we'll give you 3 billion euros. Hmm, says Turkey. Really really desperate, you say? Let's call it 6 billion euros. Absolutely, says Juncker. Here you go. And we'd also like visa-free travel across all countries in the EU. We'll get right on that, says Juncker. Now this is Turkey. They have a pretty bad human rights record and there's quite a lot of evidence that they have been buying oil from ISIS and letting terrorists cross their border. Now, you know what I said about if you come from a bit of a messed up country, you're more likely to be a bit messed up? I'm not having a go at all Turkish people, I live in a pretty Turkish area and it's great, but if you're being exposed to a pretty nasty government, what happens? Well, according to a poll by the Pew Research Centre, around 8% of Turks view ISIS favourably. Now, I know a lot of people might say something in a survey just to be shocking, but 8%? More than 1 in 13? The other worry is that if Turkey had visa-free travel and it wanted to reduce the amount of migrants it had, it could just give more Turkish passports and then Europe may have many millions more people coming in. Or just not bother keeping its end of the deal. So because of the worst and useless actions of the EU, Turkey is calling the shots and we're starting to see its approach to freedom of speech permeate into Europe in attempts to keep the Turkish government happy. So in summary, Germany's invited millions of people into Europe this is a huge burden to bear, the EU is trying to force countries into taking more migrants and now it is getting into bed with Turkey and managing the negotiations incredibly badly. I cannot stress enough how serious this is. In a recent poll, 60% of Germans said that Islam has no place in their country. And this is the Germans. They are normally filled with Holocaust guilt and are generally uber rational. Because this is the internet, I'll just explicitly state that the fault is not with all Muslims. Sure, it most certainly does not help that a lot of migrants have been exposed to radical Islam, but the last thing we need right now is to stoke up religious hatred. As history has shown us, that can end really, really badly. Notice these pictures aren't in black and white. The events over the next few years will be the content of future history books. Hopefully they will read, this is what led to the breakup of a failed political project, rather than, this is what led to World War III.